Well, good Friday morning, my friends. Joy here. Let me see if I can get the year right today. <laughs> it is January 8, 2021. 2021. Yeah, I remember when I was the secretary, it took me till like March to start typing the year right. <laughs> so, let's start off by reading our little devotional today, okay? That'll be easy for you guys to just skip it. If you don't like hearing my devotional and oh first let me say my dear friends so many of you already know this but there's a lot of you that are new and a lot of you come to my channel because it's about sewing or quilting but you need to know that that's not all my channel is about my channel is basically about me it's like a vlog and it's just because I, I can't really tell you about anybody else. I'm the only one I can tell you about. Maybe I can tell you a little bit about my husband. <laughs> but this is my channel, so it has to be about me and what I do. I am a Christian. I am an American patriot. I love our nation. And occasionally I'm going to tell you my opinion of this, that, or the other thing. And it's just my opinion. And if you want to tell the whole wide world your opinion, hey, start a YouTube channel. You can say whatever you want. And unlike Christians and patriots, a lot of people I'm referring to, you probably won't get taken off YouTube like a lot of us are. I've had my things removed. A lot of people have been demonetized. And they're people that basically think like I do. So, if you think the opposite of me, and um, you want to talk about what you think and what you don't think, start a YouTube channel. I'm sure it'll be very popular. Okay, my dear friends, let's go to January 8 in my little book. A lot of you are asking me what book. This is the book. I was drawn to it because of the turquoise pages. You know, ever since Pioneer Woman and my dishes at Jerry, I mean, I've been drawn to everything turquoise. And so I thought, oh my gosh, what a pretty book. I wonder what it is. And so I picked it up and looked at it. And then I opened it up and noticed you could color in it. So that's why I got it. Hobby Lobby. I just got it two days ago. Hobby Lobby. And there was a whole bunch of them. Their books are on a lot of different... Um, Kiosk, shelving units, I'm not sure the proper name for them. Um, but they're up by the cash registers. And so if you'll just wander around and look for a book with this color pages. And there's a lot of others too, not just this one. There's a whole bunch of different kinds. Okay, yes, my paper is in here because I discovered that. You can see I've colored these two pages. So when you close it and you want to color this page right here it makes the colors on the other side run color off onto each other and then you got color all over the place so i put a kleenex or i put a paper to protect my prize not winning coloring <laughs> okay let's talk about the eighth a clean pure heart Whew, boy that's what we need in america today Everybody, just think if everybody in the whole nation had a clean, pure heart. What does it mean to be pure in heart? Purity suggests cleanliness, something that has not been even slightly dirtied. The problem is that you were born with a sinful heart. So how can it be made pure? The only way to clean a sinful heart is by confessing your sin to Jesus and asking forgiveness. His sacrifice paid the price for your sin, and he will wash your heart clean. Keep your heart focused on God. Now, where does this information come from? I mean, who came up with this? Hello. That's just kind of hard to believe, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you where they found it. They found it in the Bible. And the Bible 
is your compass. The Bible is your daily devotional, your life devotional, your lifelong day-to-day guide through this world. Okay? That's where that came from. I'm sure there's a scripture at the bottom. Let's see what it says. This is Galatians 6, 1, 2. Nope, that was yesterday. Today the scripture is Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Whoo! That's a day I'm looking forward to, my friends. The day I will see God. Oh, and all of this confusion. Oh, all of the lies, all of the dishonesty, all of the hatred, it will all be done away with, brought to light. Light needs to be shed on the darkness in this world right now. And you know what? It's going to be. It's going to be. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited because I know, I know my God. All righty, you guys that like me because I sew, several of you have asked me to show you how to, and over, over the years, not just yesterday, but I've been asked several times to show how you move a bus dart, as in this case, the bus dart was moved down into the bottom. And again, you know, I could put a whole bunch of clips on back here. <laughs> but I'm over that now. <laughs> I'm just going to wear a backy. I told you I look like a big blue bat today. Okay, so yesterday I was Palmer Pleshing a new pattern. It's not new. It's been here in my house for a long time, but I haven't made it yet. So this pattern is from Christine Johnson, and it's a, what do you call it when you have to print it out, a PDF. This is going to be a high cowl neck. It's very funky looking up here, and I'm not even sure how to put it together. But I printed out some directions, and I'm going to cut it out and see if I can get this put together so it makes sense. I think this might wrap around the back and attach at your neck or something. It's going to be pretty high up here on my neck, which as my neck is getting more and more unreliable and staying up where it belongs, <laughs> probably going to be a good idea to cover more of it. So you can see there was a bus dart here. Now there isn't. And there's all this fullness. You can see the paper. You can see all the papers I've stuffed down there at the bottom. So I made a video for you while I was doing this yesterday. So if you're interested, I'm going to put that video right here. This is an insert. <laughs> I don't know what video I'm going to insert it in, but it's not going to be in today's. I just happen to be moving a bus dart down into the bottom of my top. I've been asked several times, I know Dimples has asked me, uh, to show you how I do that. So in this case, I am making a Christine Johnson cowl neck tunic. This is it. This is a high cow neck top. So I'm thinking since it's the middle of winter, I'll make myself a high cow neck top. And I was in the mood for red today. So we're gonna make a red one. If I knew how to use my scan and cut, I'd put something on it, but <laughs> I don't know how to use it yet. Okay, so the first thing you need to see is I have put my FBA in this paper pattern. You can see right here, is a bus dart right there. I've added an inch going across and I put a bus dart in. This is a knit. I don't want a bus dart in it. So I am going to move this bus dart down here into the bottom of this tunic. I'm making the medium. I should be making the large according to the directions. 
but it seems like every time I make a large these days, it ends up being extra, extra large. So I'm starting with the medium, and probably the reason they end up so big is because of my FBA. Because I'm adding two inches. You add this inch to the other side, that's two inches, right? Does that make sense? So I need it down here in the hip, but I don't need it up here. Except that I need it because I'm really narrow in this part of me and then fuller in this part. That's what the full bust adjustment is about on me. I'm just real narrow up here. Okay? So there's the bust dart. I'm going to move it down. So I'm going to arrange the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, let's turn that. Yeah, let's turn that like that. Let's move that back. I think that is showing. I think that's showing. Let me see what these people can see. Do you remember from our earlier tutorials that you add the paper in here where you opened up this bus dart, then you draw the bus dart how can I get this in here so you can see it? Over here to your apex. This is where my apex is. When I put the FBA in this, the apex fell down here. Because that's what happens when you add the bus dart. Because you're adding up here into the armpit also. You need that. That takes this pleat that you always get in the armhole because your blouse doesn't fit right. That takes that, that fold, that pleat out of there. Alright, so you can watch me. We will draw the bus dart in as though, as though we were going to make a bus dart, even though we're not. So, this is, you go to the apex. When you're moving, write this down, this is real important. When you're moving your bus dart, you draw the dart all the way to the apex. When you're sewing a dart in your top, you don't sew all the way to the apex. You don't want snow cone boobs. Okay, but when you're moving the bus dart, you draw your bus dart all the way to the apex. And that's my apex. That's where it started. I held this pattern up to me and I marked my apex and it's right here. That's my apex. When I cut this, the other part of my apex moved clear down here. That's a difference of one inch. Since I added an inch from here to here, that moves your apex down from here, here to here. See? And that's one inch as well. Okay? So go back up here to where your apex really is. Your boob did not fall because you put an FBA in here. Your dart certainly will fall if you use this lower point. Now, Philly said to me recently, she left a comment, you guys probably read it, that she doesn't do it that way. She does the FBA to start with, and then she figures out where her apex is, okay? So you can decide how you want to do that. All right, so now we have our bus dart up there. Let's put this bus dart in purple so you can see it better. From, from what I can see in the lens, you can't see this bus dart at all. I bet you can see that. And here's my original apex. And here's where it moved to. We're not going to use this one. We're using the one where it was to start with. So now you can see here's where the bus dart is. We're fixing to move it. So when you move your bus dart, you have to move it somewhere. Now if you'll watch your Fit Designs videos, they're free. You can watch them. There's tons and tons of them. Hundreds. You can move this bus dart anywhere. You can move it here, you can move it here, you can move it up there, you can move it up here, you can move it here, 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 anywhere. Peggy Sagers always puts a French dart. Now that would probably look good in this also. This would probably look good with the French dart. But today, we're just going to move it down into the bottom because that's what I've been asked to show you. So, all this paper that I tediously taped in here, it's fixing to get cut. Now, this is something I do. Something I do. 
You don't have to do it, but it's something I do. I don't like to cut just one line and move the entire dart into one line. I like to cut two or three lines because to me, if you cut one line from your apex all the way down underneath your apex, to me, the finished garment looks like you have a waterfall falling off of each apex. I don't want a waterfall. <laughs> I want the fullness to be evenly distributed. So the way you do that is you put it in like three different places. And so how can you do that when you've only got one apex? Now this part I learned from Peggy. You simply, and I sure hope this is showing up, you simply draw out from the apex. I'm going to draw over to there. And I'm going to draw over to here. I'm going to draw over to the side. And then I'm going to keep that one right there. So now I basically have three lines. Keep everything straight. Line everything up with your ruler underneath. If you can't see it, find a measurement and draw it. I'm going to draw this at two and three quarters up here, two and three quarters down here, and we're going to make a line, and we're going to cut on this line. Now, how do you know how far up to put this? I have no idea. Um, it might be a good idea to come down a little ways, closer to your waist. I just know you have to connect to the apex to do this, and it has worked for me. Okay, so there's that line. This line's already here because it's the very first line that I cut. That's directly under the apex, that one right there. Directly under the apex. This one's over here near the side, and then this one is more near the front. So let's see how far over we drew that. Two inches. I tell you, I'm getting super brave after watching Peggy Sagers all these years. Boy, she just chops patterns up. <laughs> She's going to cook them for dinner. I tell you, that woman is one brave seamstress. Okay. But she sure takes the fear out of it, doesn't she? I love Peggy. Do I like her patterns? No, not usually, but I do like her. Okay. Let's cut now. We have three lines. You see the three lines? We are going to cut all three of them. There's number one. I'm going to go up to the apex. Here's number two. We're going to go up to the apex. I have never made this before, so if it turns out terrible, I'll tell you. You know that's true. Go up there and cut across here over to the apex. Everything has to connect to the apex. Now see, you got all these flaps down here. And so you can move them around. And you can add fullness a little bit, little bit, little bit in each of these cuts. How do you know how much to put? Well, you can't do anything until you come up here and you cut this bus dart. We can't move the bus dart until we cut it loose. Make sure everything's taped down. So we are going to cut this bus dart over to the apex, all the way to the apex. Get this extra paper off of here, you don't need extra paper. It takes a lot of tape, you guys, buy, buy a dozen rolls of tape. Find it on sale somewhere and buy a bunch of it. See? Did you see how easy that was? I cut the bottom of it, now I'm just twisting it at the apex I'm just twisting it, and I'm making it go away. None of these lines are going to match up anymore, but we don't care. We'll even this up after a while. See? So now, the bus dart's not here anymore. It's gone. It is gone. And we're going to move it down here into these three places. So... The bus dart is still going to be, that didn't cut very good up there. Sometimes you got to cut twice. So the bus dart is going to be 
three separations now, and you can just evenly space them out. So the extra space is going to go equally across the front, and you're not going to end up with waterfall boobs. Now, if you like waterfall boobs, hey, go for it. Go for it. It takes all kinds to make the world go around, doesn't it? <laughs> all right, so that's going to be my new front. And I have moved that bust dart down into the fullness underneath the bust. Now, we're going to tape it all back together. We're going to join the hem at the bottom. This piece is hanging way down now. Let's just do that. I hate to make you watch me do boring stuff. But okay, there. So let's measure and see how much we have between each one. Now, this isn't going to total an inch. It's not going to total an inch anywhere anymore. I'm going to make that be an inch, that be an inch, and that be an approximate inch. So the first thing we're going to do is tape down center front. All right. I'm just putting a whole bunch of tape on this. So I sped it up to 400%. But you get the idea. You just put the same amount of space, approximately, between each slice. It takes a lot of tape for this hobby. So hopefully you've stocked up. Now up there you can see that I've added room. It looks like I've added room where I lowered those little diagonal cuts to the bus point. But we're going to cut that off at the bottom. So it's not going to matter at all. When I get this all done, I'm going to get my designing stylus and I'm going to redraw the hem. Starting at the front, center front, bottom and then I'm going to join it gently over there to the far bottom side. We'll be cutting paper off in the middle between center front and the side seam because that's all gotten lower and we don't need any more room down there. We're just getting the room in between where our bus dart now resides forevermore. Now you have to have your um, your styling ruler to join this curve again. Now you're going to have this, this issue here at the side. We're just going to take our styling ruler and we're going to fix that. you got to have a styling ruler. So, we're going to kind of match this curve right there. Then we're going to move it over to our medium. And we're just going to draw a new line. There's no bus dart there now, so we don't need all that unevenness. Okay? So there I am with my new side scene. I always have too much over there anyway. If you have a lot going on over there under your arm, you might want to draw that bigger. All right. So there's the front of my garment now. Now that the front is ready, we've got to do the back. Now, if you've followed me for very long, you know I always have to do a round back and a sway back, which are actually the opposite of each other. A round back, you take the pattern and you open it up. A sway back, you take the pattern and you cross it over. It doesn't make sense, I know. It's like one would outdo the other one, but no. Because one's going to happen way up here, where my top of my shoulders. One's going to happen up here, and the other one's going to happen way down here. So, you have to apply them where your personal body wants them to be. So I'll put the camera over here and show you again, because I know a lot of you are new. I've shown this a hundred times, but I will show you how I do the round back and the sway back. How do you know if you need a round back? How do you know if you need a round back? Very easy. If when you wear clothes, ready to wear clothes, clothes you made, when you wear them, if they're always going backwards on you. 
and you're forever pulling them forward and then they just go backward 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 and you're pulling it forward and then it goes backward 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 and you're pulling it forward the reason it keeps going backward is because your back wants more material it wants more fabric and you didn't give it or the store didn't give it enough fabric for your back so it's going to steal it from the front so then your blouse will ride up in the front go up on your neck especially if you have a high neck it will absolutely choke you <laughs> so I'll line the camera up and I will show you one more time how you do the round back how you do this how do you know how do you know if you need a sway back joy 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 you didn't tell us how do you know if you need a sway back you know you need a sway back and you're making a more fitted garment and you get all of this puddling right up here it's just too much material and you want to pull it down to make it straight and it won't go it keeps riding up because it's too much material and you need you can't just pull it down you have to take it out where your body wants it to come out you got to sway back right here you can't take it off the bottom off the hem because your blouse isn't shaped the same all the way up and down. So, if you want your hem to hang evenly parallel to the floor, you're going to have to adjust your inner curves and your outer curves and your mountains or hills. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Let's line up the camera. This is the back of the Christine Johnson cowl neck tunic. I am going to put in a sway back and a round back. I'm going to get a colored pencil so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to draw two lines. you got to slap the ruler down. Now those of you who have been watching me for a long time, you know how to slap your ruler down. Alright, so we're going to draw a line up high. Where is your back round? Have somebody measure your back from the top of your neck to your waist and have them look and see oh it looks like you're roundest right here and find that area on your pattern and draw a line I know mine is up pretty high up near my shoulders up near my lower neck okay so we're going to draw a line that's going to be the round back we're going to draw the seam line over here 5 8 inch seam then we're going to come down here to the sway back. Now you don't draw the sway back at your waist. You want the sway back to be an inch or two above your waist because that's where all the extra fabric always is. It's not right at your waist, it's always above your waist. So I know my waist is about 16 inches down there. So my waist is like way down here. I'm going to draw my line at 14. If Jerry was up here, I'd have him measure me real fast, but I've done this a million times, and I know that this is. It looks like on this pattern, because of the curve, they've got the waist right here. My waist is more like down here. <laughs> okay, so come down from your neck. Come down from your neck. I'm 16. I'm going to make this at 14. I'm going to draw my second stripe at 14 inches because I know that will be above my, what's left of my waist. That's right. So I'll show you my two lines. Okay. So up here is round back. This line going this way shows the seam allowance. Down here, I'm going to do my waist. Now, if you want to, put the thing up to yourself. Put it up to yourself. Put the seam line on your neck where it goes. Come down here. Pinch your waist. Why does that feel right? I've got too many pictures. Pinch your waist. My paper's coming apart. Hold on. I'm like, that sure can't work. Put a lot of tape. <laughs> Put a lot of tape. Always, always, always. This is a really good tip. Really good tip, I'm going to tell you. You'll learn it really fast if you don't do what I tell you to here. You'll go, oh my gosh, Joy should have told us. Don't ever put your iron on the tape. 
Don't ever do it. All right, now I know the camera's a little tilted, but I think you can see this. So I'm going to put this up here at my neck, put the 5 8 inch mark with that little bone, and then I'm going to pinch my waist. My waist is right there. Right there. That's my waist. I'm going to put my mark right there. Okay. So, we have round back, sway back. So now you're going to get a rotary cutter and you're going to cut on the line. How much do you open this up? If you cut through the whole thing because your rotary cutter is really too big, tape it back together and try again. We have a Pac-Man going on now. We can open it up big, we can open it up a little, or we could even cross it over. I'm going to open it up three quarters of an inch. Why? Why not half an inch? Because I've made about 5,000 garments. And my rounded back has gotten a little bit rounder these days. And I know, I've always, always used 5 8 inch, but Lately, I have decided that I need a little more than that. If you have never, ever done it, I suggest that you start with a half inch. I'm doing three quarters. Okay? Now, if you don't sew a lot, and you've never made anything before, you're gonna have to go by ready to wear. If you're ready to wear clothes, Always pull backwards on you, put this in. If you don't have any problem with ready to wear clothes, don't put it in. Make it up the way the pattern is drawn first, then determine if you need these corrections. That would be my advice. This is the sway back. Now we're going to do the opposite here. We're going to try not to cut through that point. <laughs> we're going to do the opposite here. See the sway back? We have a Pac Man again up, down, up, down. But instead of opening it, we're going to cross it over. So, I always do a 5 8 inch sway back. I've never made this pattern before, but I know that in most patterns, I need a 5 8 inch sway back. Again, if you think you need one, but you've never had one, you've never done one, start with one half inch. Most everybody these days has a round back because of computers. That seems to be the culprit. Okay? So this is how I fix my pattern for the back. Cut off the excess paper. You're going to have paper everywhere, tape everywhere. Fortunately, I like playing with paper and tape and colors. <laughs> I'm really just 10 years old. Okay. So here you can see I added paper for the round back. And down here I have crossed over and pinched 5 eighths inch together right here in the center. In the center. You do your crossover, your open up at the center. It goes to nothing over here at your hinge. And you cut from the 5 8 inch line out so the paper can move over here as it needs to. Okay? So, what I'm going to do now, since I've never made this pattern before, is I'm going to pin it together, kind of pull it up on my body. It's going to be out of a very stretchy fabric, and so the paper isn't even going to start to fit me. There, that was some sewing for you guys. <laughs> it's almost four o'clock. I've been working on this this afternoon. I just want to say I highly, highly don't recommend this pattern. This is one of those patterns that has what you have to do to a cowl. Okay, not a cowl. Um, uh, 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 what is that neckline called? It just folds over and it's rounded. Shawl. This neckline is made like a shawl collar neckline where you have that little tiny dot 
and there's only a quarter inch of fabric above it and then you have the other one that has 5 8 inch seam above it and you got to match up those dots and it's practically impossible to sew it correctly impossible so probably would be easier on a woven this is a very very slinky knit so, oh, I tell you, I really had a problem getting those dots. The dot is right here. Right here, that's the dot on the back. And you know what else this pattern did? This pattern put one notch on the back. Everybody knows that the back armhole has two notches. My goodness. This is the first pattern I've ever used in my whole life that has one notch for the back and two notches for the front. Where's the front? I think I threw it on the floor. <laughs> so see, you make this cut. They tell you to cut that right there within a quarter inch of that dot. Then, this dot right there has to be sewn to that dot right there. It is the hardest thing, the hardest thing in my opinion. So, I discovered that I put a three-quarter inch round back, the collar wants to fall back on me. The collar should be, the seam of the collar should be up, up at this bone. You have a bone right here, bottom of your neck. Mine's right there. And the seam line does not meet it. So I needed a deeper round back. I can wear it, it'll be okay, but they have what they call a high neckline and a low neckline. I folded the high neckline to the back and put the lower neckline on because I figured the high neckline would be way up here. But it would not have been. I actually have made this before. When I started doing dot duty, I thought, no, not this pattern. <laughs> so evidently the cut out one that I did before is somewhere else because as you could see, I started over on this. I cut this much off the bottom <laughs> it was just way too long it was like a dress way too long I guess that's why they call it a tunic so I didn't like that it has a long sleeve I haven't even cut the sleeves out yet because I didn't know if I was gonna like it so I'll probably go ahead cut the sleeve to three-quarter put the sleeve in and I might wear it occasionally I don't know there's just easier patterns a lot easier to do. Um, I know that uh, Glenda has a way to do a cowl neck. I think that uh, Fit Nice System has a way to do a cowl neck. Uh, there's just easier ways. This is super, super, super fast if it wasn't for those dots. I mean, you sew the collar together back here. See that seam right there? That's this. That's this. This goes around and sews to the back right here. So, you sew that up, you sew that dot thing in the shoulders and sew up the side seams and that's it. It's done. I'm going to shut this down. I did some sewing for you guys. I want to go practice with my new scan and cut. I haven't done that yet. And yes, I, I don't really know what I'm doing, but once I hook it up and I get my tutorial printed out and I start to use it, I'll turn the camera on. And pray I don't embarrass the scan and cut people. <laughs> because I screwed all up. <laughs> okay, my friends, keep the faith. And I'll be back.